How's it going everybody? Today I'm out here in the shop by myself and I want to show you how to degree a camshaft in a pushrod uh, V8 engine. Uh, this is a small block Mopar but it applied to Chevy or Ford or anything. And uh, not only how to do it, how to do it the wrong way. I've uh, made a mistake. I'm going to show you um, how I'm going to try to recover and see if that works and uh, try to give you a little bit of theory of why we're doing what we're doing. Okay, I'll show you the setup here. We got the degree wheel on. I installed a pointer. I'll explain that in a little bit. We have the dial indicator and I have a method of finding the piston travel. So with a wooden rod, uh, this would have been a whole lot easier uh, doing before the cylinder heads were installed because it would allow me to get the dial indicator directly on the lifter and allow me direct access to the piston to find top dead center. Let's talk about top dead center a minute. Why is that important? Um, Cause we're, it's cam timing versus the piston timing it's all about eliminating the errors. So I could just go to my timing cover with the balancer and say that's zero degrees, but you can have uh, manufacturing uh, tolerance in the balancer. So this could be off a few degrees. The cam timing mark could be off a few degrees. Also, you could have a crankshaft key error also, the crankshaft could have been ground uh, with the key off by a few degrees. And the cam also could be ground a few degrees off. So all those errors, sometimes they'll cancel each other out, sometimes they'll add up, and could be the difference between a good running and a bad running engine. So the manufacturer, this camshaft uh, has a recommended cam timing, and then you can alter it. So this uh, timing chain setup has a four degree adjustment advance and retard and you can adjust that to suit your needs. Um, I want to run this cam straight up, which means I want to follow the manufacturer's marking and they're calling for 14 degrees at 50 thousandths before top dead center. So to know true top dead center um, is more valuable than trying to just uh, guess. So after the heads were installed, I thought, well, I'll just guess. We'll check balancer mark and I flipped the engine over, I could see the pistons, and what I found is there's several degrees of dwell. When you see the pistons stop moving, the balancer will move several degrees. So that will add more error um, than I'm trying to eliminate. So I went ahead and installed the piston stop, used a rod and wedged it in there with a the clamp. I put a pointer out of a piece of copper wire and I rotated the crankshaft and you could feel it when it hits and then go the opposite way. Now the error that I'll have with the wooden dowel will cancel itself out when I go the other way around. So I marked down where I was when I hit the dowel. It was 10 degrees after top dead center, according to how I set my marker, rotated the engine the opposite way and it hit at six degrees. So you divide that by two and I will be, my zero mark is at two degrees after top dead center. So then I can go back and I'm gonna just move the pointer after I move the crankshaft to two degrees, then I'll move the pointer to zero. So I'm gonna put the camera down and do this. Okay, so I moved the crankshaft to two degrees mark, and that's my, and then readjusted the pointer to zero. So now that is top dead center. So now we'll go and We've got a push rod. So ideally, I would have the dial indicator straight on the lifter, but I can't do that, so I installed the rocker arm. So now I'm gonna be fighting the valve spring, and I don't have a set of checker uh, springs in to make it easy. You will get some error from the lifter uh, collapsing on the new lifter. So I put a used lifter in because it's pumped up and it will take a lot more pressure before it deflects. So I hope we don't have too much deflection. Uh, solid lifter would be better to check with. And you gotta get your dial indicator in the same plane as the push rod to get the most accurate measurement. And I'm gonna see if I can measure 50 thousandths lift and then we'll see how many degrees on the cam we have. Uh, the other mistake I made, uh, I've got the dial indicator facing the opposite way of the crankshaft. So I'm gonna be turning it over here and trying to read it over here. So yeah. A little bit more planning, this could have gone smoother. One thing I'd like to point out, because it's burned me in the past, uh, a long time ago, uh, when you line up the timing marks, 
that is number one cylinder um, not firing. So that's number six firing. So your distributor, if you put that at number one, you're gonna be 180 degrees out and have a hard time starting that engine. So just remember, timing marks aligned is not number one firing. It's number six firing. All right, let's get All back. right, let's see if this works. I've got to go almost one full turn before we start getting lift. Okay, we're just starting to get some movement. And we're gonna go to 50 thousandths. It's 50 thousandths lift. Fifty thousandths lift we have 14 degrees before top dead center. Okay, so that's 14 degrees for top dead center. That's where the manufacturer says to set it. That's where I'm gonna leave it. And that's on the straight up position on this timing chain. So that tells me the timing gears and the timing uh, chain and cam are ground pretty accurate. Okay, so we checked it uh, immediately. And now after giving some time, the valve spring has collapsed the lifter and we're about back to zero. So that's why a solid cam lifter would work much better. But we caught it before it bled down and the numbers do line up with what I've expected. So pretty happy with the results. Uh, sure would've done this thing different next time, but. So if you're still watching, uh, thanks. And I hope you're enjoying this uh, engine build and a few tech tips. I sure would've done this a lot different, but I think I recovered and I'm happy with the results, so. Next step is get this engine buttoned up. Uh, I gotta adjust the carburetor yet, get the intake manifold on, and just button this engine up. All right, till next time, thanks.